Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to Dan's Pro Shop, where everything's made up and the instructions don't matter. Yes, sir. Just like all those pieces and bits left over after you're done putting together a piece of IKEA furniture. <laughs> yeah, that's extra. They put that in the box just to mess with your head. Don't worry about it. Hey, today we're going over Ohm's Law. We're going to make this quick and dirty, but this is an amazing thing to know how to do if you don't already. And us electricians live by this rule. It is the law of life the triangle which we all do our jobs by. So let's take a look at this thing and see what's going on. So for those of you that may not know, Ohm's law is super important whenever it comes to electricity. It deals with voltage, amperage and resistance. Those are the three main things that we deal with in electricity on a daily basis that allow us to accurately diagnose systems whenever they're not working correctly or whenever we're constructing something new. This allows us to anticipate what we're going to see even before it physically exists. Those three things are super important. Don't get me wrong, there are more things to measure in electricity than just those three, but these are the primary three that you need to deal with. Let's take a look at this diagram so we can better visualize what's going on with those three measurements. So guys, what we have here is the triangle of life. This is Ohm's law in a symbol. And this is by far the easiest way to remember it. So the V obviously stands for voltage, the R obviously stands for resistance, and the I stands for current because this in an electrical schematic displays current. So anytime you see I, just assume that this is amperage. The other two, you obviously know what they are. This one is just the odd man out, so you know that it's current. So if you guys are familiar with simple algebraic symbols, whenever you see one number on top of another one, that means divide. Or whenever you see a number next to another one, that means multiply. So we use that principle with this diagram here, and you can automatically figure out the value that you need to find. And the coolest thing about the way that this symbol is constructed is that if you need to find one of these particular values, but you have at least two of them, you can always find that value simply by using math. So let's say that I have a circuit and I know the amperage and I know the voltage, just like your wall outlet in your house. Normal ones in North America are 120 volts at 15 amps. So that tells me I have two out of the three of these and I need to find the resistance. So all you do is take your thumb and cover the value that you want to find and then do the math on the other two. So I just divide my voltage by my current. Whatever my answer is, that gives me the value that I'm looking for. And that goes the same with the rest of this diagram also. If I need to find the current, cover the current with your thumb and then do the algebraic equation that's left over. Divide your voltage by your resistance and the answer will give you the current. You guys can see where I'm going with this. If I need to find voltage, cover the voltage and multiply the current by the resistance and that answer gives you your voltage. This is foolproof and it works every time. Now I know, I know, I know what you guys are thinking. Math, this isn't why we came here, but hey, this actually makes things easier instead of harder. This is just simple division and multiplication. Once you guys understand and remember this diagram in this order, V over IR, repeat that to yourself. This thing will become as easy as the alphabet to you once you remember it. This will make diagnostics so much easier because you only need two of the three values and you automatically know the third. And you don't even have to be at the circuit to find this, that's the best thing. As long as you have a piece of paper that tells you at least two out of the three, or you have some way to find those values, you can get your answer without even touching a meter. This is invaluable information. And this is honestly just the tip of the iceberg whenever it comes to electrical diag. But this is by far the number one strongest thing that you need to start with if you're getting into this. So if you guys are interested in stuff like this, drop a comment and let me know. We can talk about it. Until next time.